Comic Stew. Welcome, welcome, welcome to yet another episode of The Comic Stew. As always, I'm Aaron, and I'm joined by my good buddy who missed a hockey game last night, Mr. J.C. Argensinger. Hey, who's I played in as many games as you have this season. I don't think that's true. I think it is true. Uh, you've missed at least two games because of sickness now. Is that true? No, nope, that's not true. Um, the, diff- the difference between uh, last night and... Uh, Last night and tonight is uh, I was sick both days, but last night I was playing hockey. Okay. What's your story? Yeah, I was sick and tired. (laughs) I'm, of course, giving JC some shit because uh, we were both sick yesterday, but I played hockey and he didn't. I don't have a cushy office job. I don't have a cushy office job. I got to be on my feet all day. Uh, yeah, you have the job where you stay behind a desk and greet guests. Uh, all right, well, moving on, moving on. JC's wearing his Wolverine hoodie, by the way, today. I just wanted to point that out for uh, everyone not, that can't see this. Not a hoodie, it's a onesie. Okay, <laughs> yes. Um, uh, unfortunately, you actually being there last night may have actually made a difference because we lost by two goals and we were just basically – beat into the ground because of our fatigue level so it, it was a rough game well sounds like all season <clears throat> sounds like the last two seasons like, like the game you you uh, you missed uh, we lost by one and we had no goalie so you know it might have been important if you had been there well we had a goalie no we he didn't wasn't, he wasn't very good apparently i would have been a better goalie <clears throat> well maybe you should have played yeah. No, All I right. Uh, well, this week we have a lot of news to talk about uh, because it's been a while. And uh, I think the both of us didn't really read much. Am I right about that? No, nah, I've been in a uh, sick coma. Mm-hmm. Well, I've been sick this week as well, but I did manage to read in about the last week and a half, almost 100 issues of The Walking Dead. But I don't want to talk about that until JC's caught up on the series. So I'm going to skip that. And uh, we're just going to do uh, some news. It might be a short episode this week, but we're going to we're going to talk the news. And uh, before we start, you sipping on anything? Cold medicine? I'm sipping on some Theraflu. Theraflu. Good times. Yep. I'm on the uh, the since it's around six o'clock that we're recording this. I'm sipping on the coffee and. uh and the water, because because God, I have been so dehydrated the last few days trying to stay on top of the water. Ah, uh, all right, JC, you ready for this? Are you ready? All right, you take the first story. What do we got? Comic Con tickets came out this week, guys. I hope you got them already, because they're sold out. Um, oh, shocking! They were sold out within an hour, less than an hour, I guess. By the way, just hearing my voice and hearing your voice on the mic, like, we sound like such shit right now. Why are we doing a show, JC? Well, you know what? Because we're professionals, goddammit. Yeah. Well, I'm a professional because I even play hockey when I'm sick. All right, anyways. Really? Are you really that... Are you really that surprised that the Comic-Con sold out? No, of course you're not because it sells out every year. And uh, I'm, I'm sure it probably set new records for how fast it sold out. For sure. I was actually um, interested to see that uh, they're, they're talking about possibly, I guess there's a, there's a big deal going on in San Diego with the, the Chargers Stadium. And they, uh, they're talking about making a huge new convention center that's, that would potentially house the Chargers and Comic-Con, which mm-hmm. sounds like a huge place. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it sold. I guess the whole thing sold out in forty minutes, which is pretty impressive. I mean, it's a lot of tickets, but it's unsurprising. Uh, yeah, you know, I don't know that if they have a bigger venue that like they can really even, you know, how much more they can really accommodate because it it ends up just being more of a cluster. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it already is such a such of one already. It's uh, it's it's bad. When was the last time you were at San Diego? Last year. 
Oh, you went last year? Yeah. Oh, wow. I should start paying I, attention. I, I actually cosplayed as Aaron Brewer that year. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, there would have been news stories about that. There's no one that could look in there. Well, I guess you didn't pull it off that well. I, I, I had to make myself look worse. <laughs> uh, what is this next news story, JC? Star Wars 8 working title Space Bear? Does this mean Ewoks are back? Well, it's a question. So, uh, Carrie Fisher, I guess, uh, tweeted a photo of uh, her, you know, uh, her chair, and it has um, the picture of a bear in the middle of episode um, for episode eight, and then you see Space Bear above it. So that's the the working mm -hmm. title. Could obviously mean absolutely nothing. Um, I guess the working title for Force Awakens was AVCO and uh, Rogue One was Lunak Heavy. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it might mean nothing, um, but Space Bear, I mean, when I think Space Bear and Star Wars, I think, I think, I think Ewok. Chewbacca. Well, I don't think of Chewbacca as a bear. Think no, of what do you think of him as? Like, uh, um, what's the thing? Uh, Guy who runs around in, in the in the wilderness, uh, not Harry. Oh, uh, Sasquatch. Yeah, like Sasquatch. Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Yeah, he's like Chewie's like a dog bear. He's like a cross between the two. He's like a mog, a half man. He's he's, he's a little dog. too skinny, little too skinny to be a bear bear, but he could be like a dog bear. He's Han's dog. He's, he's a like, mog. What up, dog? He's a mog. A mog. Okay. You don't get the reference? No, I'm I'm too tired and sick to think about what the reference of Mog is. Sorry. Half man, half dog. He's my own, I'm he's his own best friend. Oh jeez. Okay. Still don't get it? <laughs> That's Spaceball. No. That's Spaceballs for the kids out no, there. I haven't, I haven't seen that movie forever. I think I watched that when I was like ten. I never seen it. Yeah, I never saw it again. For shame, for shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what uh, the Space Bear could mean. I, I really don't even think about that. I, I think they just put the most random titles possible on those things, and uh, people still figure out what they are. So I don't even see why people do do the fake production title thing anymore. Like, if it's a popular enough pro property, people will figure it out. But I guess they just want to make people uh, work for it a little bit. Yeah. All, All right. right. I, th I thought this next story was kind of interesting. Um, apparently, there's an article where the uh, director of Deadpool 2, Tim Miller, was cited as not wanting to go bigger and better for the sequel. And why does that make you optimistic, JC? Well, I think we talked about this last week, and, um, you know, I, I don't think the character lends himself to uh, saving the planet. So I think uh, not doing bigger and better and just doing something on that same small scale has it, um, you know, a good chance for being a, a successful grounded movie as opposed to something where you're like, wait, Deadpool's doing what now? You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm I'm just looking up the Deadpool budget for uh for the first one because yeah. I think it was slightly were... larger than Clerks' budget. Okay, but... it was fifty eight million apparently. Yeah, which which, still, which, which by like today's small. standards is very small. Yeah, I mean it's still a hefty you know it's still a hefty budget, but uh yeah, pretty small for uh super. But co yeah, compared to a typical superhero movie, I mean you're talking a hundred million to two hundred million easy uh 200 plus in a lot of cases so yeah 58 million is nothing especially, and especially considering it's now the uh you know number one x-men movie of all time yeah which is which is very ironic considering it had one of the smallest budgets um but it just uh it makes me wonder because I mean I'm glad they at least want to go into it with this mindset of we want to keep the scale small because I think you are able to focus on the character more when you are able to do that. 
but I, I do wonder at the end of the day, um, considering how much this made, how much how much they'll throw into the budget for the second one. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm sure that I'm sure that they will like um, spend more on it. Um, I mean, you know, you you could get some of the other X Men characters, you know, not have like the jokes like they did uh, when he goes to the expansion and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah. But you know, I mean, compare that to another movie which could have been a, a you know, a small budget, you know, movie, but like Ant Man, which was another like character that a lot of people didn't know about. That budget for that movie was 130 million. Really? Yeah. So, you know, I mean, you said what 59 million for for Deadpool? Yeah, 58. 58. So yeah, I mean, yeah. Even, even if you bump that up to like 75, 80 million, it's you know, you can do a lot more but still keep it uh somewhat you know reasonable. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I like. I really do hope they they keep it the the scale small. But I don't know. Bringing in cable, like I, I don't know. They they could do so many things bringing in cable. So who who knows? Exactly. Who knows? They have the same writers on it. So hopefully it's good. Hopefully they they have oh, enough time yeah. to really make the script shine as much as they did for the first one. Yeah, exactly. Well, I don't think they're gonna have as much time because didn't they work on that for like ten years? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, so I saw another article uh, about a little TV show that I thought you might uh, you might be interested in. Um, you saw an article about a TV show that I watch. Did you, did you see this TV shows? Because uh, this is this is related to Arrow and related to Legends of Tomorrow, correct? Well, it, it's it's a Legends of Tomorrow thing with Arrow characters. Yeah. So, so I guess they're going into the future. The yeah. team is going into the future, Star City of the Future, and you're, you, we have old Ollie, something like 2046 or something, and you have old man Oliver Queen, who's still Green Arrow, apparently. Yep, and uh, apparently he's going to have one arm, a la Frank oh. and Dark Knight Returns. So mm. I was kind of, mm. I was kind of sto- stoked to see that, and I guess there will be a second green arrow as well. Um, Oh, oh yeah. Connor Hawk. Yeah. Yeah. I heard about that. Yeah. Connor Hawk, which is, I guess will be his grandson or son. I'm not sure. I'm not sure which I forget if Connor Hawk is his, I guess it's his son. Actually, I don't know who Connor Hawk is in the comics, how he's related to Ollie. I guess he's a completely different character. Yeah, this is this is me being ignorant about DC, but I forget if there is any relation between Ollie and Connor in the comics. I would ask you, but I don't think you know either. He is the son of Oliver Queen. Is he? Yeah. Are you sure about that? Did you just look that up? I was pretty sure about it, and then I double double checked to make sure. So he's he's Black Canary and Oliver's son. No, uh, Sandra Moonday Hawk is the mother. Oh, hence the hawk. Okay. All right. Well, so you're gonna watch this episode? Yeah, I mean, I'm you know I'm in, I'm definitely interested. I mean, I'll, you know, I'll probably just catch up so that I know where they are at the show, unless it's like a a one off uh, episode type of thing. Um, yeah, they've but they've guess, all kind of been. I oh, guess. Go ahead. I guess it's on tonight. Oh, is it? Thurs- yeah, Thursday the twenty fifth. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it would be, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've. I, I guess every episode of Legends has kind of been standalone a little bit. I mean, they all tie together, but they're they're always looking for Vandal Savage. But yeah, they've kind of been jumping around in time, so you get different periods and. Uh, you get some interesting scenarios. Mm-hmm. I guess um, I was reading something about um, – the, I don't think the show – I don't know how well the ratings are, are on the show, um, which makes me wonder if it will get a second season considering I think it's a kind of an expensive show for um, for the CW. So, 
But I mean, it could totally just be kind of a one-off, you know, series, and that could be it, and that's fine. Because these characters could always just go back to uh, the shows they came from. But um, even if it is, it's, it's been it's been fun so far. I, I'm only three or four episodes in, but I've I've been enjoying it. Okay, I've, so uh, I'm I gotta say I'm looking at some of these photos of old Green Arrow, um, and I don't know if he does actually have the one the one arm, but um, the actor Stephen Amell before he posted the picture posted the Frank Miller. Um, old Green Arrow, so with just oh. one, like talking about just having one arm, so it makes me oh. think that that might be the case, but you know, I don't know. Yeah, I know. I th- I think I saw a production picture where he's like just just older looking, but he has both arms, and he kind of looks the same as he does in the current day show. He has the same suit, but he just has like the. Of course, he's old, but he has a beard, kind of like he does in uh, in the comics with the goatee and everything. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't hear anything about the one arm thing. I thought maybe maybe that was another version in the same episode or something. Maybe he gets maybe he loses it in the episode. <clears throat> maybe. Spoilers. Ah, yes. Um, yeah, well anyways, I haven't been watching a lot of TV lately because uh because did I mention I read like a hundred issues of The Walking Dead? Uh, I thought you were just gonna say it's been all internet porn for you. Um no. you have mentioned I read that. I read uh, volume five through volume twelve of The Walking Dead, which uh, that's a lot of issues because that's twelve issues a pop. Pretty good. So yeah, I think I read some like ninety six issues. I can't wait to talk about it once right. you're. Cut we'll, out. Talk, we'll talk soon. Um, I know you really wanted to talk about the Last Man on the Moon documentary that comes out on the twenty seventh. Um, you watched the trailer and everything. Aaron? Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm fully caught up. I know uh, I know all about this. You know when I was um, when I was when I was like halfway through that the Walking Dead marathon reading session, I was like, you know what? What could I be doing right now? Oh yeah, looking up more information on the Last Man on the Moon. You know something that really happened. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, hence, uh, hence, it's hence like pretty- completely not as interesting. Um, I mean, I beg to differ. Walking on the moon is pretty cool. Yeah, well, reading about fictional characters in a zombie apocalypse, that's better. Hello. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll agree to disagree. You uh, talked about this on, like, the first episode, right? Like, one of the first episodes we did. Yeah. Last Man on the Moon, Docs. You've been looking forward to this for a while. Yeah. I'm a big space nut, you know? I, like, uh... I'll watch any space documentary. Yeah, you like them space bears? Space bears. You're all up on it. Yep. Um, all right. Well, here, let me let me talk about this next story because I kind of feel like I started this by talking about how there was these rumors going around about how uh, Warner Brothers was kind of tepid on their internal response to uh, Batman vs. Superman. Well, this story that just came out this week kind of counteracts that because... Basically, Zack Snyder's already starting on pre-prep on uh, the Justice League Part 1 film. Um, apparently, it's going to start filming in April. Uh, he's in the UK now doing pre-production on it. So, it seems to counter- counteract that, that, that rumor a little bit about how, how they're not happy with the movie. Well, you know, they, they, leaked, they had to put this out there because you blew that story open, Aaron. And like, uh, you, that's you know. true. Um, but did you see, uh, he actually, speaking of which, he tweeted a, uh, a photo out there from the costume department and there was a, uh, a, I guess a leak, um, in there oh, because, yes. because you could see the, uh, flash costume in the background. Mm-hmm. What, did you see it? Yeah. You, I mean, I saw it. I saw it barely. Yeah. I saw it. You, you barely see it, but mm-hmm. whatever. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm catching up on the flash TV show. Uh, a couple episodes behind still, but just watched the return of the, the reverse Flash, so that was fun. I'm sure they'll make it look different than the TV costume. Like they, they, I've got a feeling they're going to try to make this as different as possible from the TV show. Yeah, I would imagine. Just in, in, in every way, because they know it's the, the show's a hit, and they've got to make it. They've got to do something different that'll be exist in a parallel universe that people are still going to enjoy that 
it doesn't feel like it's treading on the TV show, I think. Yeah. I mean, at the same time, like, you can't, I, I think they're going to stay fairly true to the character, too, so. Yeah. I mean, it didn't look, it didn't look like something that, like, was like, oh, that doesn't look like the Flash's costume. Um, now, I know we may have talked about this, but uh, is Barry Allen supposed to have a cameo in Batman vs. Superman? Don't know. I forget. Well, I thought I thought he may allegedly, have a cameo, allegedly, or allegedly he may show up, but you know, we don't but, know. You know. But I don't know. Well, we don't know if it's going to be we actually see him or we see his blur or mm. what. Uh, his blur is that a euphemism? Yes. All right, moving on. Um, this is a very interesting story now. I'm of two minds on this because number one, I'm kind of heartbroken that apparently Guillermo del Toro is leaving Pacific Rim too. It's, it's heartbreaking JC. Cause you know how, you know how, you know, I love me some, some, some Guillermo. I do know this, but I, you know uh, I, I haven't seen also, Pan's Labyrinth yet. I believe, I believe, uh, yeah, you haven't seen Pan's Labyrinth and I believe I also sent you this article uh, with the caption "Go change your pants," because uh, well, that's the other side of it. Stephen Denight of Daredevil showrunner fame and Spartacus fame is taking over the directing duties, which okay. uh, it's it's kind of an oddball choice on the surface because he's you know been known as a TV guy, but just knowing his sensibilities, like I'm actually really excited to see what he can do with the sequel. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm excited. You know, I'm glad the sh- the movie's still gonna come out because that's been you know up and down. Oh yeah, well that that's the other thing. That should be the first and foremost thing. You know, and then uh, this movie's actually gonna happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm you know if it if it's not gonna be Del Toro, it's it seems like it's in good hands. Uh, you know, I think it it's some uh, if this is I don't know if this is his first feature or not, but it's a good one to uh, get your show your chops. I'd say so, I, and I think it is his first feature. I think he's been in TV until now, but I don't think Hollywood is as reticent to uh, to give TV guys a shot because I mean we see what happened with uh, the Russo brothers on Captain America. And, uh, whoa, there was some feedback. What was that? Hello, I didn't hear. you didn't hear anything? Jeez, I guess that was all on my end. Wow. Uh, Russo brothers on Captain America, and uh, uh, there's an, there's another good example that I'm not thinking of because because my brain is foggy today. But um, you know, TV guys succeeding in film is something that's been happening in the last couple of years. So I don't think uh, that's that's a big that's a big risk anymore. Yeah, I agree. Um, I saw this next article that you were talking about and I uh, feel like it's uh, not true. The article we are referring to is of course about uh, Batman vs. Superman Blu-ray supposedly is getting an R rating. Um, why do you think it's not true? I I could see maybe if they released like a you know, some sort of, like, director's cut version of the Blu-ray that ha- had an R, but I think they will release a PG-13 Blu-ray just because Warner Brothers is all about making money and, like, you don't want to, like, have a parent be like, oh, this is an R-rated movie, I'm not going to buy this for my kids. Well, considering Zack Snyder released, like, three versions of Watchmen, I would think this would be a version that's going to be rated R. Right. Now, I could see that maybe, but again, it's, you know, Batman and Superman, I feel like it's an R. Uh, well, it, you, an example that I was actually thinking of that, that I would have thought the same for was uh, The Hobbit, Battle of the Five Armies, which came out, and the uh, the Blu-ray got an R rating, which was surprising, but it it just did because of the, the amped up violence. So, I mean... I don't know. I mean, it's it's kind of not that crazy anymore. As long as the the theatrical release has a PG thirteen, I think that's all they care about. 
Yeah, I would think so. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I, yeah. they will obviously have a PG... If, if the movie comes out in PG-13, they'll obviously have a PG-13. Yeah, they'll be, a, yeah they'll, they'll be a theatrical cut of the, the film for sure. But yeah, I think, I think they're... I think this makes sense that a movie of this scope or in, in size is going to have some kind of director's cut. I'm sure. I mean, I think the movie's already two and a half hours. Like I could see a lot of stuff. They probably had to leave on the cutter cutting room floor. So it wouldn't surprise me if there was a longer cut out there too. Yeah. All right. Um, Oh, I saw this story today actually. And I thought this was kind of funny. So I guess uh, Tim Miller, the director of Deadpool, actually directly went to uh paul feige and he got approval to change a negasonic teenage warhead uh her power set which uh which is kind of interesting i guess in the comics um she had like precognitive slash telepathic abilities and uh, obviously they wanted something a little more flashy in the movie. Yeah. So they went with this uh, more like Cannonball-esque uh, power set. Yeah. You know, I, I, I won't lie. I'm not that familiar with the character. So I didn't notice the well, change. I'm not either because apparently she only appeared in one issue of New X-Men in Grant Morrison's New X-Men. And, um, I don't, and I read that run and I don't even remember her from it. Yeah. So... You know, and, and I mean, it's a cool name, so I feel like they probably went with it because it's a cool name for Deadpool to talk about. Um, so, Well, I think that's literally why they chose the character, is yeah. they saw the name, they're like, let's use her. <laughs> yeah, which is cool. I, you know, I was glad, you know, I didn't, I didn't care. Yeah, no, she was probably one of my favorite parts of the movie, if not my favorite part of the movie, so... So, I want to talk about a little news article that I just saw before we talk about what we have coming up next, because I don't know if you saw this article yet, um, but your favorite upcoming show has a lead. Iron My Fist. Favorite. Iron Fist has been... Oh, is that breaking? Um, that is today. Oh, that's today. Oh, I did not see this. What? Uh... So, so Finn Jones, who plays, uh, you might remember as Loras Tyrell in Game of Thrones will be playing Iron Fist. Really? That's Finn the word Jones. on the street. Okay. Oh, this came out, I guess this came out this morning. Hmm. I don't know what I think about that. I mean... I guess I you know what it is it's in Game of Thrones it's the curly hair mm -hmm. like the 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 ringlets of hair he has so it's like it's a little uh, like I don't I don't obviously see Iron Fist like that but uh I mean I guess he kind of has a look for uh Danny Rand so well, I could, obviously, I could see that. obviously his character is very different in Game of Thrones so um you know that would be an adjustment um but uh, yeah, he uh, he wears armor and swings a sword in Game of Thrones, and uh, in in Iron Fist he'll be punching people. So there there is a little bit of difference there, JC. Well, I was talking more about the characterizations, well, the fighting styles. But yeah, that as well. <laughs> uh, well, that's cool. I'm glad you pointed that out because I did not see that today. Yeah, I know you're not on your game. I'm not on my game. I'm. Did I mention I'm uh, I'm sick today? Well, you know, maybe if uh, maybe if you address it up. Um, so, uh, but on that same Marvel uh, Netflix note, uh, the season two Daredevil part two trailer came out. Oh yes, so part one was very Punisher centric, and part two was very Elektra and Hand and Ninjas and Stick and Daredevil centric. What'd you think? And I loved all of it. What do you What do you think? What do yeah. you think? What do you think? I thought. I mean, it, it looks freaking awesome, man. Like, I don't know. It. I just. Yeah. I. I wonder how it's all gonna play out. I just can't wait to watch it. Like, what can I say? I mean, it, you know, I'm I'm hook, line, and sinker. I'm. Yeah. I'm. 
I mean, yeah, it was it was cool to watch it, but like I, I've definitely hit the saturation point where I just want the show now, and it's like it's a month away. It's just give it to me. I want to see it. That's all. That's it. I mean, I do. It does make me wonder, uh, you know, how much longer are they going to wait until we see uh, a little bullseye? You know, I think that character. You know, JC, uh, I think that character. They should really is, is a big enough character that they should save till season three. Because I think if they're gonna throw the Punisher and really like hype up the hand, then they should probably like. I think what what this is how they should approach season three is having Wilson Fisk come back in a big way. He hires Bullseye to take out Daredevil. Like that's simple plot, but I feel like season two is gonna go pretty pretty plot heavy and and a lot of moving parts in season two i mean we have electra we have we're gonna have stick uh in some capacity we're gonna have the hand and i just feel like there's gonna be a lot going on in season two i think see, it would be nice in season three and i know um this is total just uh this is total speculation obviously because no one knows what's gonna happen in season two yeah. but if i could if i could guess it seems like there's a lot going on and in season two. And so in, in season three, if they pull it back and just really made it a cat and mouse game between Matt and bullseye with the Kingpin kind of like in the shadows, pulling the strings, like that might be a cool direction to go. Well, he's got to kill Electra. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh, maybe uh season finale. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I'd, I'd be, you know, I, I, I like your idea as well. I, uh, um, th- doesn't it seem like there's th- there's just going to be a lot of shit going down oh, in season I, two? I, I agree completely. I I'm not expecting to see Bullseye in this season, and if I do, I would expect it to be in the last episode, you know, in the last pl- part of that episode. Yeah, if if we see Bullseye, I think it's going to be just in a context of seeding him for season yeah, three. Exactly for giving us something to watch next. You know, like to to talk about until next season yeah um yes sir then i saw another little uh guillermo del toro movie news did you see this no so, actually uh, i was gonna ask you what is del toro doing now that um he's no longer on pacific rim like i was wondering about that so there is um scary stories to tell in the dark adaptation um, which I guess he's been working on for a while, and it's uh, finally back in uh, in the uh, in the works. And I guess the the writers from uh, the Lego Movie have been tapped to write a script. So I mean, they're still in that kind of stage, but uh, it's gonna be uh, something he's definitely producing and potentially directing. But uh, hmm. but apparently he's rumored and attached to like twenty five things right yeah i know i know that's why i feel like guillermo is one of those guys that he's got so many he's so enthusiastic he's got so many ideas he just wants to be a part of everything and then just realizes like at the end of the day i just can't do this all right so yeah um i read a story a while ago about how he was kind of done making big budget movies so i wonder if this is something that he'll take on yeah, it I mean, seems like this is going to be a smaller scale thing. I mean, somewhat, I guess. I mean, it seems you know, still seems in his in his deal book. So, I don't know. Um, we shall see. Did you say in his wheel book? Wheelhouse. Okay, because I was going to say wheel book actually sounds way cooler. I mean, he probably does have a a, a wheel made of books. Or a book with a lot of wheels in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. Moving on. Just a couple more stories here. Um, oh, I don't. I have no idea what this is. You're gonna have to take this one, buddy. Um, well, I, yeah. I mean, I just saw this. Uh, um, there's this film, April and the Extraordinary World. It's uh, like a steampunk animated film. I guess it's a French film that came out about a year ago and it's having the u.s uh adaptation uh coming out on march 25th uh 
and um, apparently it's really, really good. So, um, you okay. know, I'm. Uh, it looks gorgeous. So uh, I'm excited to that it's going to be coming this way, and uh, looking forward to seeing it. Yeah, wow! Watching the trailer, the the art is uh, wonderful, especially the the background art. Yeah, it's pretty striking stuff. Yeah, it's uh, it's steampunk and um, yeah, it looks really cool. April in the extraordinary world. Yeah, and I mean, uh, hand drawn two D animation. So yeah, we don't see a lot of those anymore. Always, always a fan of that kind of stuff, and it looks, uh, you know, it looks pretty sweet. So, yeah, as am I. Oh well, you're gonna have to do complete the trifecta, do three stories in a row, because because uh, you know, you know how I feel about this. I have not read the book, and so I'm not invested like you are. Go ahead. All right. So uh, we we finally got, I guess, uh, some uh, Ready Player One final casting for Steven Spielberg's adaptation of the uh, novel. Uh, I guess Ty Sheridan, who uh, is playing Cyclops in next month in X Men Apocalypse is going to be the uh the lead character wade um so uh yeah that's the news that just came out uh i don't really know the kid uh i haven't seen any of his stuff other than uh like the trailer uh yeah you know, he's playing cyclops but I, I guess he's done you know some good couple films like scout's guide to the zombie apocalypse which i guess was he was good in so uh you know, it's a it's it's that a, movie, that movie Mud with Matthew McConaughey. He was in, I think. Yeah. So I mean, you know, it seems like he's done enough work where I'd be like, okay, he's obviously knows what he's doing. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a younger, it's supposed to be a younger age character. So you know, yeah. it's kind of. I mean, does, does it does it really matter though at the end of the day? Because I mean, the draw is obviously Steven Spielberg directing. Well, I mean, you assume Spielberg is going to take care of it. You know, you would assume that. All right, I want to do the. I want to do the next story. I want to do the next story. Okay, good, because I don't really know anything about it, but I just saw the article and thought. Uh, I actually, I actually don't know much about this either. But uh, so there's a series from Marvel called Karnak, and uh, as any good comic fan should know, Karnak is uh, one of the Inhumans, one of the main Inhumans, and. Um, Apparently, so see, I'm not reading this series. I didn't order this series, but uh, Warren Ellis is is writing a Karnak series, um, which is kind of weird, like because uh, I just first of all I didn't really expect Warren Ellis to do any since Moon Knight, which was kind of an offbeat character. I mean, which I could guess I could see that more being in his wheelhouse. Um, but like Karnak, I wouldn't wheel expect book, him to. Aaron, his wheel book, not his wheel. Oh, his, his wheel book. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, I, I, Moon Knight was definitely more in his wheel book, but but Karnak is even just more of a offbeat character, and I didn't see uh, how that really fit into his sensibilities. But apparently, he's doing this series. Um. Apparently it's well regarded. I'm reading that it was it was one of the the best uh, of the Inhumans comics, um, but that was apparently four months ago because it's taken that long for issue one and issue or for issue two to hit after issue one. Yes. So four whole months. You know, um, I, I'm 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 a fan of an art of an artist of writers getting it right, doing their uh, best and putting out something that's killer um but as a as a fan it's it's i've i've sat through those books where issues start coming out uh you know months and months apart uh kevin smith uh i think is majorly guilty of this uh, a number of times um yeah you know it, it become it becomes painful and it becomes hard to remember what's going on in the story and um but it does sound like something that I would like to read the trade of in, you know, four or five years. Yeah, that's what I was going to also say that I was probably planning on getting in the trade if I heard it was good. Because I did assume that since it's Ellis, it's going to be a 
mini series is going to be a short series um or at least the part that he's writing is going to be short it's probably going to be only six issues so i thought oh that'd be a nice trade yeah. probably pick that up um and i can only imagine um Honestly, if I had to guess who, why the delay, I would say is probably Ellis because uh, I'm I'm looking at the art and the art is the art is actually really good. Yeah, the art's great. Um, it it's it's got great uh, like like motion and energy in it. Um, like I really want to read this, but uh, I it, it doesn't look like this is the type of art that's going to take four months to draw an issue of. Yeah. So I can I can only imagine it's Ellis, and I mean there's there's been delays in his uh, his writing before, so that's why I think it's probably him. Yeah, the artist is uh, Gerardo's Zafino. Yeah, who I haven't heard of, but uh, his stuff is real good in this yeah. issue. It looks great. So I guess in uh, what twelve fourteen months, uh, be looking forward to that trade. Um, well, if we're going four months an issue, I mean, it's probably going to be like three or four years. Oh yeah. That, that for four years, let's just, let's just round up and say four years. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, this was interesting. Uh, you just sent me a link for this trailer, um, for the show called FX or, uh, taboo on FX. Uh, the show is called taboo. It's on FX. Did I get that right? Uh, you got it right. Okay, I got it right. Um, yeah, so apparently this is a uh, this is a mini series or a quote event series that is going to be on FX. It stars Tom Hardy and it is produced by Ridley Scott, I believe. Yeah, and it's set in like the eighteen eighteen fourteen something like that, and it looks great. Um, the the byline, I guess, would be Tom Hardy taking on the East India Company. Yeah, something something of that effect. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, it looks interesting, and I mean the the cinematography looks amazing. Yeah, no, it show. looks yeah, it looks stunning. Um, and I mean I thought it was surprising that Tom Hardy would be doing a a TV series. So, uh, you know, it actually doesn't surprise me just because it seems like that guy does not turn down a role. And I don't say that in like a bad way. It just seems like people offer him roles and if he likes the role, he just goes for it. I mean, he was bitching about how he wanted to play um what's his face in Suicide Squad, uh Captain Boomerang or whatever. He was bitching about how like he wanted to play that character, but his schedule just wouldn't allow it. But he actually did want to be the like play the character. So I think he's one of those guys that just like he knows that He's in a very privileged position of being in being a top actor in Hollywood, and he just wants to keep on working. I mean, yeah. That's, so I mean, he's just not turning down roles, which is that. I mean, that's cool. So you're talking about uh, Sam Samuel Jackson slash Christopher Walken's disease? Yeah, it's the it's the Sam Jackson effect. Yeah, Walken, uh, but. But it, it's cool. It actually, it's it's nice that he has the integrity to not really care about whether something's on TV or, you know, a big budget movie. I mean, this well, yeah. this looks like a great story. So I'm glad he's doing it. It's like a great story. It looks, I mean, it looks stunning as we said, and you know, it looks like it'll be something highly regarded. So, you know, I guess it's not that crazy. It, it, yeah. you, said it, you said it is just going to be like a mini event series. I think they they were kind of building it. Well, at the beginning of the trailer, they kind of build it as an event series. So, and I can only imagine, you know, if Tom Hardy's doing it. Uh, it's probably not going to be like a, a show that runs like, you know, ten seasons. It's probably just going to be however many episodes, probably less than ten episodes. And yeah, it's, it's an eight uh, an eight episode miniseries. Yeah, that makes that makes total sense, and that's it's just going to be one and done. There's there's more and more of these on TV, which I think is cool. It's like you're you're getting a kind of a big movie, in a sense, and I like that. Yeah. Um, and it was it's also just I mean this has been happening for a while now on TV, but it's also just awesome how TV just just looks just big budget movie quality. Like you can see it in so many shows now where. It just looks like this. This could be a big budget movie, you know. Um, maybe 
I think a lot of the budget is probably going towards these these big huge effects and everything now. But it's just as far as like just beautiful cinematography, like you're seeing so much of that on TV now, and it's 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 awesome. Yeah, it looks like it was actually uh, same uh, writer who did Peaky Blinders. Oh, hmm. Well, I wonder if that was part of the reason Hardy wanted to do it because he was uh, in several episodes of Peaky Blinders, correct? Um, I haven't seen the show. Well, I know he's in one episode because I'm on season two. I'm like slowly getting through season two, and he was on at least one episode of that. Yeah, and it looks like it looks like there was also another movie, Lock, with starring Tom Hardy that the guy wrote and directed. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't see that. So they must be uh, good friends. Yeah. Um, last little news bit. Uh, I thought you would be excited about. Um, George R. R. Martin dropped the bomb that uh, there will be a a, a, a a twist that happens in the book that won't happen in the show because in the show the character is already dead. Is that really a bomb though? Because I feel like there there is no bomb because we don't know what's gonna happen and we don't know who the character is. It's so vague. Like I read it, I was expecting a big spoiler. Then I realized like. Going into the articles, like, well, wait, George Martin actually was the one mentioning this, right? Well, he's yeah. not going to give away anything, so no. it's not that big of a deal. No, it's just him. Like, it's just him t- trying to get attention back to the book. Yeah, and, well, and he make, and make people feel happy that like they'll get something different, you know, once the show's already come out and ruined most. Yeah, of it. I mean, this is stuff that I expect in the book because there's a lot of characters who are still alive in the book that aren't alive in the show and there's some vice versa. Yeah. I think, although I, I need to think about that, but there's definitely characters who are alive in the books that are not alive in the show. So I would expect things like this to happen. So that's cool, but yeah, exactly. it's really a non, it's really a non issue for another two, three years. So, uh, I got a question for you, Aaron. Yeah, JC. Are you up to date on the uh, the files of X? Uh, I am five sixth of the way up to date. Oh, you're a failure! I missed the last episode. Yeah, I was saving that for the weekend. Well, then I won't ruin it for you. Okay. And I can't talk about it on the show. So. All right. Well, um, we'll have to talk okay. about it next week. Sorry, folks. You you catch up on you catch up on like a hundred issues of Walking Dead uh, by next week, and I'll uh, I'll catch up on uh, on X Files. I'll watch that one episode. Fuck you, man. <laughs> yeah, I'll spend forty five minutes to catch up, and you read a hundred issues, and we'll be we'll be tied. Uh, you're not going to be able to catch up until you get that third omnibus, right? The uh, the compendium, I mean. Yeah. So that's that's already been solicited though, right? It's already out. Oh, the compendium is volume three. Yeah. Oh, it is already out. Cool. So you can actually you have access to that then. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna force you too much on that because I was kind of being facetious because I'm not gonna like make a big deal out of it considering there's a lot of people that probably uh, probably don't want to be spoiled on anything Walking Dead so. You know, they're not going to be like into listening to us rant and rave about the books, but I definitely do want to discuss it once you're caught up. Are you caught up on the show? Yep. Can we do a spoiler alert, people? Uh, let me do the video game minute first. Okay. Let's start with you. What you been playing this week? I've been playing sick. Um, last thing I was playing... Oh, uh, was some Destiny beta. You mean Division beta? Yeah. Division beta. I wish you'd play some Destiny beta. <laughs> you'd like it. I'd be like, oh yeah, I'm just playing the beta, Aaron. Sorry. Yeah. I knew I was doing something wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the uh, actually speaking of Destiny, Iron Banner's back this week, so I've been playing a little bit of that. Uh, how is how is the Division beta? Dude, I, I'm so stoked on it. Is it is it actually good? Because I'm like, I'm very. 
Are you playing it on PS4? I, I've just been playing the beta on Xbox, but uh, I will get it on PS4 so you babies will play it with me. Okay. Well, um, I don't know. I'm like, it, it's it's weird. I'm, I, w- I was reading some previews about it. It sounded pretty cool, so I was kind of stoked on getting it. And then, I don't know, just seeing some other stuff about the game. Um, I think I was watching some gameplay videos, and I was like, I don't know. This doesn't look like that compelling. But I still haven't played it, so... I, I mean, mean, to me, it's a lot more compelling than Destiny. Okay, well, you haven't played that much Destiny. You, you have not reached the end game whatsoever of Destiny, so you can't even, you can't even talk about that. Right. I'm more compelled by this game, though, to get to the end game. All right. Well, I don't even know if they have an end game plan for this game. I mean, I'm sure they do, but uh, I, I, here's the thing. I'm I'm probably gonna get it because it. Well, I, 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 I think I'm going to be compelled to get it, first of all. But uh, you guys are going to force me to get it. Yeah. But it does sound, it does sound compelling it, just in that it, it has – sounds like it has a pretty strong single-player narrative. So at the very least, I can just play the single-player and have fun with that, even if I don't get into like a big in-game thing. Yeah, so, I mean, definitely from like what I've seen of the missions and stuff, there's much more of like, um, they're more interesting and stuff so far. Uh, yeah. And well, I mean, and the and the and the universe is cool. So. Yeah. Well, well, maybe we'll talk about that more when it actually comes out, and we're both playing it. All right. But uh, my video game minute was uh i've been playing some bloodborne this week you know what bloodborne is jc how you gonna you know game? what Wait, so say that again i said how <laughs> you get we both just talk over each other i said how you get an std <sighs> oh i get it I, I think i know what you're saying there haha <laughs> no have you heard of bloodborne on ps4 I've heard of it, but yeah, I don't know the game. It's, it's a PS4 exclusive. Have you heard of the Dark Souls series? No. Really? You haven't heard of Dark I've Souls? Heard of, I've, heard of it, Souls? I've heard of it. I've heard of it, but I don't really you know. Played it. You never played it. Basically, they're they're action RPGs, basically just tough as nails games, like very, very hard, like very hardcore, uh, very tough games. Um, a lot of like trial and error gameplay. Um, the games are very hard. They're actually really fair though, because the games really teach you how to play and like the enemy's weaknesses and all of this. The game is on, on two hands, it is incredibly frustrating, but on the other hand, like incredibly exhilarating because you are constantly dying. You're constantly getting frustrated. You're running in these really hard enemies, but once you're able to beat a guy and like once you're able to get past an area, it's like it is one of the coolest feelings like that I've had in a video game. Like it's it's really, really addicting gameplay. Like I'm you're you're constantly like redoing areas, but like I just feel compelled to like get, get back in there and keep keep on battling. So what, what's this that's been fun. Gameplay? It's a third person, like third person action. Okay. But it's like melee, melee combat. You're uh, in the Dark Souls series. It's kind of a medieval setting where you're you're blocking a lot with a, a shield, and um, you, you'll usually have a sword or some kind of weapon like that. But in Bloodborne, which is more of like a Victorian um, setting, you have you have a pistol in one hand, and you have some crazy some crazy ass melee weapons in the other. Uh, you have some like I'm using something called a sock cleaver. Uh, which is like this this big like this big ass like saw sword that uh, you can like you can make uh, you can make like a longer version of to get more reach on enemies and um, it's just a it's just a really cool game. Yeah, it sounds. It sounds um, a lot of, I wanted yeah, to ask. Sorry. I wanted to ask you: Have you played um, Alien Isolation? I actually just bought that recently, but I have not played it. Okay, so it's it's similar to me in that what you, what you were describing as really hard and really satisfying when you clear an area. Uh, yeah. The only difference is 
there's like zero combat by comparison to what it sounds like to the game you're talking about. I mean, there is combat, but it's very minimal and you're very scared about having combat because you will then be making noise, which will cause the alien to come up and kill you. Yeah, you're basically just you're you're just trying to avoid the alien for uh, the whole game, right? Right. And I, I heard about the game, like apparently there's some other stuff thrown in, like some other enemies thrown in, but uh, to kind of like pad out the game. But I, I heard that it has a really strong core, like the game, the core gameplay of just evading the aliens really fun. So yeah. I want to get to that eventually. Yeah, it, it is really fun. Um, I guess my biggest complaint, which is a weird complaint, is there's too much content in that game. Well, that's actually the complaint I heard about it, is that it's too padded. Like, it's like a 25-hour long game. Uh, the story's like 25 hours long, and it should be, like, like people were saying if it was like six hours, it would be amazing. Yeah, I mean, I still, I still think it was amazing, but, like, I got to a point where you thought you... Just you done with it? You, well, you thought you had the climact, climactic battle. Mm-hmm. And then the game's like, nah, there's a, there's a, like, it's not over yet. And I looked online and it was like, oh, there's another like eight hours. No, oh, jeez. Like, yeah, that, that's, that's <laughs> frustrating when you get to where you think you, you want to be done with the game and it's like, no, we have more because we want to say our game is this long. Which, I mean, I, again, I guess it's better, it's better than, you know, having a Battlefield game that has no content, but, um, Battlefront, that too. Yeah. No, uh, well, I think I think if a game crafts a really compelling narrative, I don't think the length matters. Like it could be six hours, it could be sixty hours. Like just just craft a compelling narrative, and that's all you need. I mean, I'm fine playing a game. Like I'd rather know that a game is maybe six hours before I buy it. But uh, I don't know. I'm not a game where I'm like evading an alien. I wouldn't expect. I don't know if I'd want to play that for 25 hours. Yeah. Well, Aaron, no matter what they ever tell you, length does matter. Okay. Uh, one one last thing. I know I'm stretching the video game minute uh, quite a ways here, but uh, I did pick up Far Cry Primal last night, just kind of on a whim. Um, I've always been a fan of the Far Cry games. I've played every one except for four, uh, which I just didn't get to. But but Primal was such a uh, such a seemingly fun twist on uh, the setting that I just wanted to tr- check it out. And I have some time off coming up, so I picked it up. And uh, so far, it's really fun. I mean, it's kind of the it's kind of the, I guess you could say, typical Far Cry gameplay in that you're you're exploring an open world, you're unlocking areas, you're uh, taking over strongholds, but you're doing it in a cool way where you're like commanding animals and using kind of non-traditional Far Cry weapons where, you, you, you know, instead of guns, you're using like a bow and arrow and a club and it's more like melee focused. I was going to say that that's Far Cry like animal petter simulation yeah far cry Beastmaster. um uh, yeah I, i've actually never really played any of the far cry series more than 30 seconds or you know a few minutes here and there it's fun man i i think far cry is one of those like really underrated series out there i mean i think it's maybe not so underrated now but i feel like far cry 1 far cry 2 were really underrated games that uh definitely got some exposure but it wasn't until Far Cry 3 where, like, it really kind of blew up. So, I mean, this is a, this is a cool direction for the series to go. I mean, I, I like that they're doing this type of game because that just means that they're willing to experiment with different time periods and different, you know, different settings and gameplay mechanics. So, yeah, it's, it's cool. Yeah, I feel like the rap on Far Cry was always that it was pretty but not that great of a game. Um, but it was I, fun. You know, I completely like, disagree with that. Well, no, no, I mean, not that it was a bad game, but that it was just more graphically stunning than it was uh, gameplay stunning. Uh, that that may have been the rap about the first game, I but think, I thought that. I, I'm thinking of. I mean, I thought the I thought the first game was uh, I thought the gameplay was fine. I mean, it was it was kind of more of a 
just traditional shooter. Uh, the second game definitely took a lot more chances and experimented with uh, what you're doing in the game and how the game played. Um, and then the third, you know, the third game is is one of the most fun like first person shooters I've played. It's it's a great game. Uh, and, it, and if you like the that kind of open world collection, unlocking new areas, um, kind of like approach how you want to gameplay, then Far Cry is definitely a good series for you. Okay. I'll have to check yeah. it out someday. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, um, I think that's all we got, JC. Well, are we going to do a little Walking Dead minute? Oh, yeah. Uh, all right, yeah, yeah. It'll just be a minute because... All right, spoiler alert. Uh, we're going to talk about Walking Dead, the second uh, episode of this half season that just came out basically last sunday's episode i forget what episode it is 10 i think okay um all right so aaron what'd you think of them just jumping right into the rishon i was so hoping you were not gonna say that word I, I was actually to, I, I was watching the show live, and they did that stupid Talking Dead show after that, and whoever the host is, Chris Hardwick or whatever, like dropped that, and I was just like, "Oh my god, I've got to turn this off. I can't I do it." Just for you. Oh, I can't do it. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, Talking Dead is awesome, so you don't know what you're talking about. But yeah, after hearing Rashone, I, I can't do it. It's great. I won't do it. Um, terrible. Um, but what did you think? Like they, it was kind of, kind of interesting how they just went into that. Like they were living together and you didn't have like a moment where you were like, Oh, they're to get, it started off and they were like living together together. And it wasn't really, you didn't get to see that moment of when it happened or anything. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was obviously kind of shocking, and I don't, I don't know if I really like that because I, I like I like shows where characters can just be friends, and they don't they don't have to be together. And I felt like Rick and Michonne almost had a deeper bond than than rom- romantically, you know, like. I, I guess it makes sense considering like how close they are, but it was, uh, it was definitely unexpected. I'll say that because it does not happen in the comics and, um, well, okay. Now the other thought that I've heard people talking about is Michonne is dead because everyone that Rick gets with dies. Is Michonne going to die? Oh yeah. That's definitely a rule of the show, isn't it? Like that's, that's, like That's Rick definitely gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah, she's n- yes. Now that now that Rick has soiled her, she's definitely going to die. Yeah. I think we can both agree on that, JC. I think so. <laughs> uh well it was definitely a um definitely a slower uh episode after that that mid season premiere episode. I'll tell you what, they 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 took a step back. I mean they had to. But they did introduce um, uh Jesus. Yeah, that was cool. That was that was kind of the highlight of the episode. Yeah, because um, I was actually like, I was trying to think back. I was like, what actually happened in this episode? I, I hardly remember. And because that that first like the first episode is still just just dominating my mind of how good it was. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was it was you know it's a fine and, episode. And, uh, and uh, what's her name got got off finally? Um, Deanna. Oh, Zom- well, zombie Deanna got killed. Zombie Deanna. Yeah, that was interesting because I thought I thought the supposition was that she had killed herself and like shot herself in the head. So yeah, I wasn't sure. I didn't realize she was out there wandering, but I guess in all yeah. the, in all the chaos before. Yeah, I actually thought. Um, I actually thought Michonne might get with uh spencer yeah just after yeah. after seeing her with him early in the episode yeah i was i would have I, I like i would have been surprised by that as well but 
yeah, I could have seen that happening as well. Yeah. But yeah, yeah another, um, another solid episode. Uh, should be interesting. We've got, you know, at least, you know, their world's definitely getting bigger with, you know, this character and then, uh, you know, yeah. the, there's a couple of groups now coming into their world. Not just yeah. one. Not just one this time. Yeah. How many more episodes do we have? Uh, so like, like eight episodes or or maybe not that much. Uh, like six episodes left or something. Because isn't, isn't it 16 episodes in a season? I know they always split it up. Yeah, I think it's... I want to say it's like 18. So I feel like we have like seven more. Okay. Well, what I was getting at was I heard that... Um, I mean, this isn't really news because it's been out there for a while, but uh, the the big bad uh, that people are kind of waiting for is supposedly, I mean, he's already cast. Jeffrey Dean Morgan's going to be playing Negan, and uh, apparently he's not going to show up until the, the season finale of this season. Like, I thought he was going to show up way before that. Yeah, no, you're right, actually. 16 episodes, so there's only, what, one, two, uh, like five episodes left. Yeah. Or no, six episodes left. Sorry. Uh, yeah. What I what I originally said. Because yeah. I'm always right. Uh, but yeah, I was surprised that uh, to hear that. Actually, I think I read that today that Negan wasn't going to show up until the season finale. So they're really going to be kind of spreading this out. Which. Well, I'm glad. I mean, you know, that like I don't want them to have like everything happening at all i don't want it to get like clusterfucked either yeah it is one of those shows where if, if they kind of space out the main plot points that's fine um as long as it's been, as long as it's good i mean it's it's yeah. been good for the last couple seasons so i'm i'm fine with them kind of like stretching things out so that that's fine yeah cool all right uh you got anything else jc uh, I don't think I do. All right. I think you got some laundry to take care of or something like that. I got to, you know, I got to fold some, uh, some drawers, some drawers. All right. Well, we'll let you, we'll let you and everyone else go mercifully. Uh, I can't, I don't know if I can hear myself talk uh, any more than, than, than this. So yeah, you're the, you, you, it's not your voice. I have to listen to your voice the whole time, man. Well, I got to listen to my sick voice and your sick voice. So I, I really just want to end this now. It's a mercy killing. All right, people, thanks for sticking with us. If you stuck with us, uh, thanks for listening to our sick nasally voices. We appreciate you. We love you. Uh, me more than JC because JC doesn't love very much, but we do appreciate you. That hurts. We can at least agree on that, right? Aaron, that hurts on the inside. Yeah, I know. You you don't you don't have an inside. You have no feeling. Fuck. All right. All right. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna that, go that, kill myself. Yeah, that took a dark turn. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for being with us, people. Uh, you can catch us on thecomicsdo.com. Email us at thecomicsdo at gmail. Uh, follow us on Twitter at the Comic Stew, and uh, look at uh, pretty pictures of JCs on Instagram I at am, JC I am, really Singer. I am really pretty, but they're not pretty pictures of me. So, well, pretty pictures that he takes. Right. And you totally talked over my plug for your Instagram. Can I can I say it again? Do it again. Okay. Uh, at JC Argit Singer. Thank you. Thank you. No, no one thank you. That. Yeah. No, thank you. Uh, you can find him on the website. Find his name on the website. It's all linked up. It's all there for you. Um, thanks again for being with us, people. Hopefully, we will be less sick next week. Yeah? Yeah. Let's go for that. All right. Later, people. Be good.